As the University of Montana reports a continued drop in student enrollment, Montana State in Bozeman announces a new record. University 16, of Montana's total enrollment is down again this year. It is the eighth year in a row Montana has seen The University of Montana is reporting another decline in enrollment for the fall semester, but the drop did not... MSU enrollment continues to soar. In fact, they now say it's the highest the university has seen in a generation. Says the university needs to do a better job of telling the story. Over the course of the last decade, Montana's two largest colleges have seen a lot of change in their enrollment. Any informed Missoulian knows the University of Montana's enrollment has been falling consistently for the past eight years. In that time, the school's enrollment fell 40% from its record high of 10,567 undergrads in 2011 to 6,321 undergrads in 2019. Meanwhile, in Bozeman, MSU is reporting some of their highest enrollment numbers ever, an undergraduate enrollment of 14,510 in 2019. These disappointing statistics might have any grizz-loving Missoulian asking, what the hell is going on? There is no one reason that enrollment has dipped at UM, and no one can know for sure why less students come here. But let's take a second to look at some contributing factors. First off, high schools across the state of Montana have seen a 5% drop in enrollment since 2011. Then, in 2015, John Krakauer wrote a book accounting several incidents of sexual assault at UM. Also, across the country, there are less people pursuing arts degrees in general. Folks can make a lot more, potentially, with skilled manufacturing or the trades than they might with an art history degree. Bachelor degrees in philosophy, history, and English fell 15% from 2008 to 2016. So the question is, how is UM's marketing strategy adapting to these setbacks? And why is MSU's enrollment thriving in this climate? To get an idea of what the schools are doing differently, I created a fake alias, Dan Hopset, and requested enrollment information from each school's respectively, just like any high school senior might. MSU's sign-up process was clean and simple, but UM's was, well, broken. During the first two weeks in September, when I tried to begin this experiment, UM's information sign-up page was broken, Currently, the link is working, but when I brought this problem up to administration, they were unaware that anything had ever been wrong. So in an effort to be fair, I ditched the traditional sign-up process and sent emails to the respective admissions teams to tell them that I was interested and wanted information. MSU's team got back to me on the same day, while UM's team took almost a week. Over the next few weeks, emails started coming from both schools, but shortly after, I stopped seeing UM's emails in my inbox. Surprisingly, I found UM's emails in my spam folder, despite this being a brand new Gmail account. When I asked Kathy Cole, head of marketing and recruitment at UM, about this, this is what she told me. Yeah. We've been blacklisted on Gmail, and we're, and we're trying to get out of email jail. So, I, so we know that, and we're working with Gmail to fix that, and our service provider. Do you know how it happened? You got blacklisted. We, well, probably because we sent a half a million emails out. However, shortly after the interview, Kathy emailed me to amend her statement, saying, I misspoke about the students who have Gmail accounts, and I wanted to first apologize and second, correct the statement. We are not blacklisted on Gmail. Students who have Gmail have trained their accounts to recognize email like ours as spam and send them immediately to that folder. But it goes right to the spam folder after that, and we have no control. So what's going on? Is UM's emailing system blacklisted on Gmail? Gmail doesn't disclose what IP addresses they decide to blacklist but it does pull data from several third-party blacklisting agencies. When I searched for UM's email IP address through a list of these, they came up on a blacklist called Sorbs. UM is currently in the process of switching to a new communication system. The new system should resolve this problem. However, it won't be ready until April, according to Cole. So if students aren't receiving Gmails from UM, how might they hear about our school? The school has recently shifted its recruitment strategy to something a bit more old-fashioned, handwritten letters. Cole, her staff, and student volunteers have written about 10,000 handwritten letters. Dan Hobbs had received one of these in the mail, and this is what it said. Dan, now is a great time to visit UM. Please join us as my special VIP guest for Grizz for a Day, a special personalized visit based on your areas of academic and co-curricular interests, as well as an in-depth look at our residence halls and dining locals, including lunch. You'll learn why we say you can go away to college without leaving one of the top 10 best cities in the U.S., Join us. Simply reach out to my office and we'll set it up for you. See you soon, Kathy. Dan Hopset also received the semi-gloss, full-color, 43-page booklet from MSU. Which would grab your attention more? 
UM is confronting enrollment in other ways as well, like President Bodner making appearances in high schools across the state and a new call center to reach out to prospective students. However, Dan Hobbs had never received any calls. UM and MSU have very different enrollment strategies. UM's personal touch is a creative way to make an impact on prospective students. However, their difficulties in digital marketing may slow them down. The future of the university is unclear, and only time will tell if UM is tomorrow proof. Thank you.